ABC News tells the story of a high school football player by the name of Cody Leahy, pictured on the screen, who in 2006 experienced a severe headache following a helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision during a game. CT scan results showed that everything was fine. However, Cody was still experiencing pretty severe concussion symptoms. Knowing his CT scan was fine, Cody decided to suck it up and go to practice, despite his symptoms. During practice, Cody experienced a second hit to the head, and soon after, he collapsed to the ground, having to be rushed to the hospital where he wasn't expected to make it. Cody had suffered from a condition known as second impact syndrome. Hello, my name is Cheyenne Barlow. I'm a freshman in health and exercise science major at Bridgewater College. I plan on pursuing a master's degree in athletic training, and today I'm going to be talking to you about addressing the culture of sport to decrease the presence of second impact syndrome, or SIS for short. An article published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine in February 2014 on the number of concussed athletes who played through their symptoms found that 69% of concussed athletes reported playing through symptoms and 40% reported that their coach was not aware of their concussion. A link to this study can be found in the description below. What is so scary about these findings is that all of these athletes were at risk for experiencing much more severe issues, like second impact syndrome. According to an article published by Staff Rolls updated in July 2020 and linked in the description below, SIS describes a condition in which an individual experiences a second head injury before completely recovering from an initial head injury. Second impact syndrome typically results in death or lifelong disability due to brain swelling or even brain herniation, according to an article from Beaumont Health, linked in the description below. Cody, the high school football player mentioned earlier, survived the condition. However, he was left without the ability to make short-term memories, he was confined to his wheelchair, and he only recently regained his ability to speak, according to ABC News. Some people affected by SIS are not as lucky as Cody, as SIS has a mortality rate of around 50%, according to the Sports Medicine Resource Manual, published in 2008. That is an awfully high mortality rate for a condition that can easily be prevented or avoided altogether. We need to eliminate SIS, and the only way to do this is by preventing athletes from playing with concussions or concussion symptoms. According to documentation linked below from the CDC on concussion policies in sports, Current legislation requires that athletes, parents, and coaches are educated on concussions. However, this education can only do so much. In fact, the same study mentioned earlier, published by the American Journal of Sports Medicine in February 2014, found that this education had no statistically significant impact on whether or not a coach was aware of an athlete's concussion and handled it appropriately, meaning that the problem leans towards athletes not reporting their concussion symptoms rather than a lack of education. A link to the study can be found in the description below. According to Dr. Frederick P. Rivera, who led a concussion study at the University of Washington, educating coaches is important, but it may not be enough. One thing that needs to be done is to address the culture of sport, of winning at all costs, of manning up, and playing despite symptoms. An article from Complete Concussion Management, published in 2019 and linked in the description below, states that a few of the top reasons why athletes hide their concussion symptoms include the culture of toughness in sports, the fear of missing out in practices and games, and not wanting to let their teammates and coaches down. A study published in the Journal of Athletic Training in July of 2017 looked at the frequency of reasons athletes gave for not reporting their concussion. You can see on the screen a graph composed of information published by the study. The study found that out of 288 athletes who hid their concussion symptoms, 85 reported that they did not want to let their team down, 105 reported not wanting to lose playing time, and 72 reported being afraid of looking weak. The study even goes on to discuss how concussion education should focus less on knowledge about concussions and more on creating a team culture in which reporting symptoms is considered normal. The study also highlights the need for a program aimed at changing the culture of reporting, implying that by addressing the culture of sports, these numbers will drastically decrease. A link to the study can be found in the description below. These statistics solidify the idea that the culture of sport is an issue when it comes to athletes hiding their concussion symptoms. And according to a report published by the CDC, and linked in the description below, we need to create a culture in sports where athletes recognize and report their concussion symptoms. And in doing this, we can avoid SIS. Now, I want you to imagine how you would feel if one of your close friends or teammates sustained a concussion while playing their sport, and despite being aware of their symptoms, they decided to continue playing, stating something along the lines of, I'm too tough to sit out, or I'm afraid of losing playing time. They then proceed to receive a second into the head, causing them to collapse with second impact syndrome. I'm sure you would first feel extremely devastated that something so awful happened to someone so close to you. However, how would you feel about the statements they made prior to returning to play? That they were too tough or afraid of losing playing time? I'm sure you would feel angry that the culture involved in their sport caused them to feel the need to sacrifice their own health just to play, and that ultimately resulted in something terrible. 
Now I want you to imagine that instead of fearing looking weak or losing playing time, your friend decided that their health was more important and sat out, suffering no further damage. This could be accomplished by addressing the culture of sport. I encourage all athletes, coaches, and parents to work towards addressing this culture by first posting the concussion information sheet from the CDC, seen on the screen, in all areas where athletic activities are taking place. In doing this, we are creating a culture where even if an athlete feels a need to or attempts to hide their concussion symptoms, they will be constantly reminded of the signs, symptoms, and severity of their injury. And if they still attempt to hide their injury, their coaches and teammates will be able to identify the basic signs and the athlete can be removed from play. To find this information, you're going to want to go to the first link in the description below. You will then want to scroll down to Signs and Symptoms Poster and click on it. Now click on Save as PDF and download the document to your computer. You should now print the document out and post it in frequently seen areas like locker rooms and on the sidelines. As athletes, coaches, and parents, you now have a resource that I urge you to use as the first step in changing the culture of sport to not only create a safer and healthier environment in sports, but also prevent the presence of SIS in athletes. Thank you all for watching. Please feel free to check out the links in the description below for additional information.